In total, the UK government was before Friday last week directly funding 10 donor projects in Uganda, with some running up to the year 2022 under the justice law and order sector. Education, healthcare, disarmament in the north, plus the PRDP program. These had a total budget of 200 million pounds, totaling up to 132 trillion Ugandan shillings, with some of the highest catered for projects, including the UN Joint Program for Implementation of National Population Policy with 30 million pounds, increasing access to antimalarial drugs, which had 3.8 million pounds. This in addition to accelerating the rise in contraceptive prevalence in Uganda that had 25 million pounds. Despite the fact that the cut of the UK aid will go down the flesh of several Ugandans, the civil society is divided about it, with some in support while others against it. If the money is being diverted to other causes which are not priorities or it is being swindled by a few people and cannot assist in our social and economic transformation, there's, there's no reason why that money should continue to be sent to a few people who, who will only enrich themselves. Now, addressing the problem of corruption is not about cutting aid. Although cutting aid is something that is important for the donors to demonstrate their dissatisfaction, let's work on mechanisms of getting the thieves and then work on alternative models of delivering this aid. The total direct financial aid to Uganda planned for this financial year by the UK government was at 26.9 million pounds, but due to findings of the Auditor General's report in Uganda, UK chose to freeze the remaining 11 million pounds due to be paid before the end of March next year. Its stand was that unless the government of Uganda shows that UK taxpayers' money is going towards helping the poorest people lift themselves out of poverty, this aid will remain frozen and that UK would expect repayment plus considering criminal sanctions. The civil society, however, says that cutting the aid will teach Uganda no lesson if the thieves in government are not caught. We must realize that cutting aid in itself is an important instrument that uh, our partners have in terms of ensuring that the Uganda government uh, respects human rights. You see, even if we are not just funded, we as NGOs, most of us, raise money internationally. When global news goes out and they say there is a, crisis, a, a corruption scandal in Uganda, the people who don't stay in Uganda understand that all Ugandans are thieves. And that is the problem. Other projects affected include a support Red Cross, Yellow Fever Response in the North, planned ethnic resilience in Karamoja, among others. To many, the decision by Britain is the latest indication of a fallout with Kampala after billions of shillings in international aid meant for the reconstruction and post-conflict recovery in northern Uganda and Karamoja subregion were stolen by state officials. Kitale Moses, Lopez Television.